In this video, we will interactively set up the gradebook for your course. Before starting, do you have the grade allocation for your course planned? You usually have this in your course syllabus, and it might look something like this. This table shows how students will earn their final grade. We are going to convert this table into Brightspace's gradebook. A quick note before we get started. This video shows the grading for a typical course. Some courses have very unusual grading schemes, so not everything here may apply to you. We will split this up into two parts. In the first part, we will look at setting up the gradebook wizard. And in the second part in another video, we will look at configuring the grades using the settings we have specified from the gradebook wizard. To set up the grading for your course, start by clicking on Course Admin and then scroll down and click on Grades under the Assessment heading. The first time, you will be taken right away to the Setup Wizard. If you don't immediately see the wizard, you can find it at the top, so click on it over here. The wizard shows the current default settings for your course, and we're going to alter some of them. Click on Start. For the vast majority of courses, a weighted grading scheme is sufficient. This is the scheme where you have a different number of categories, such as assignments, final exam, quizzes, and so forth, and all of these categories add up to 100% of the course grade. A point system is illustrated in the example. And finally, a formula allows for fairly complex grading formulas to be entered. Keep the default of the weighted system and click on Continue. In step two, you should keep the default of using the calculated final grade. The adjusted final grade can be useful in situations where the student's grades are modified before they are released. For example, you might need to fine-tune and adjust some of the grades up or down before they are released. You can start now with a calculated final grade, but always switch over to the adjusted grade later on. Click on Continue, and Step 3 requires some explanation. You can select Drop Ungraded Items or Treat Ungraded Items as Zero. If choosing Treat Ungraded Items as Zero, the student will start the course with a grade of zero, and as the course progresses, their grade goes higher and higher until the end of the course, and then they reach their final grade. There can be potential confusion, though. Students will see a zero for items in the future that are not graded yet. If you choose the Drop Ungraded Items option, then students see their grades, reflecting their progress. In other words, items that are ungraded are not used to calculate the final grade. This can mean the final grade appears higher than it might otherwise be at the end of the course. One way to avoid confusion is to select Drop Ungraded Items, but also not show the final grade. We will talk about that in a few minutes. This way, students will see a dash for ungraded items and zero for items that are actually zero. Here's an example. The student has seven out of 10 for assignment one, they got 0 out of 15 for assignment 2, and assignment 3 is in the future, so it shows a dash for ungraded. None of the settings here in the wizard are fixed. You can always come back and change them and see the effect of that change. However, it is our experience that the settings shown here lead to the least amount of confusion. Click Continue. Generally, we recommend the use of the percentage system, as it is the easiest to understand and set up. But other schemes are possible, and you should always preview to see what they look like. We will show in the next videos how you can see what students see. Click Continue. Step 5 is related to the number of decimal places. You should use one or two. Afterwards, click Continue. Step 6 is related to what students see. It is our experience that you should keep all four of these checkboxes selected. This gives maximum information to students and leads to fewer requests for grade clarification from the students. We also recommend that you keep the final grade calculation being displayed to students. This way, they get to see how their grade is broken down. Click on Continue. And then the final screen, Step 7, is a summary of your settings. Click on Finish. Once you have run through the setup wizard, you can now start with a grade entry. As this is the first time setting up your grades, you should start by setting a new category or a new item. Another video explains what the differences are between these two. Some of our other videos show how to enter the grades and manage them. But one final important point. 
see the settings link over here on the right, that is always accessible to you. If you use this, you do not need to repeat the wizard. In fact, all the settings we changed in the wizard are accessible here individually, so you don't need to repeat the seven steps. This is helpful if you want to see the effect that each setting has. Note that the settings are spread across three different tabs. The first tab is related to what you see in the gradebook in the browser. The second tab, the org unit display options, is related to what students see. We realize that the gradebook settings can cause concern amongst faculty and teaching assistants. Setting this up is usually done only once, so it can be stressful. Are you making the right choices? Please use our support team to assist you. They have experience with setting up gradebooks for a variety of situations, and they can walk you through it.